Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with some updates to recent video reviews that we've done, just for the sake of completeness and to continue the conversation. Three of them, as usual, at least I like to do about three at a, at a time. Uh, you may recall recently we had a discussion about Giancarlo Minotti's absolutely marvelously spooky opera, The Medium. And some of you mentioned the original cast recording, which is on Naxos. Naxos Historical, they've re-released it, and it's quite good sounding. I have to say, Mark Obert Thorne did the remastering. Um, the cast features, let's see, Evelyn Keller, Marie Powers, Beverly Dame, Frank Roger, and Catherine Mastis in the normal cast here. And then it's coupled to The Telephone, which is a comic opera, which is the original uh, they were originally a, a, a one-two punch. You know, it was a, a twofer. They were intended to be performed together. And the telephone only has two characters, Marilyn Cotlow and Frank Roger again. Now, the, the telephone is the opposite of the medium. The medium is creepy and spooky. The telephone is humorous. It's a story of a guy who's tried to propose to his girlfriend, but she won't get off the damn telephone. That's it. It takes 22 minutes in a single act. It's humorous. It's light. It's delicious. And eventually, he does propose to her by calling her on the telephone. And they sing a duet over the phone. It's really charming. It's a delightful work. So combined, they only last 77 minutes, both operas. Um, they were recorded in 1947. This is the original cast. You know, you know these pieces were very well received when they originally uh, were originally released by Minotti. I mean, you know, the, the New York performances, they were on Broadway. They were not done in an opera house. They ran for 200 performances and in London too, just the same. And it, you know, reminds us of a time when the difference between um, theater voices, that is American theatrical voices and operatic singers were not so far apart. It was, it was, it was a better time in terms of in terms of our understanding of the arts, that is the popularity of the arts and, and accessibility of them. Really it was in some respects, in some respects anyway, at least if you were like, you know, white and wealthy. I mean, if you weren't, well, that was another issue, right? But there was a, a, a time when Broadway singers and operatic singers from a purely aesthetic point of view seemed to have more in common. Remember Porgy and Bess was also originally it originally ran as a musical, not as an opera. And of course, there was always Gilbert and Sullivan and operetta and all that stuff. It was just sort of a nice jumble. So anyway, here is the 1947 recording with the No Name Pit Orchestra conducted by Emmanuel Balaban very nicely. And the sonics are quite clear, quite clear and lovely. So Minotti, that's something to consider. Um, and there you go. Next, well, Continuing our run on every performance of the universe of Elgar Violin Concertos, you mentioned three, all performed by lady violinists, which is really kind of fascinating. And I have them in the overflow room, so I went and snagged them. We have this one on Berlin Classics. This is fun. Catherine Minukian violin, the Staatskapello Weimar under Stefan Solium. I mean, it's not anybody that, that's going to like you know get people lined up on the street to to buy well i mean nobody's lined. you know you know what i mean right i'm um, lesser known artists very fine performance really first rate nicely recorded what's the date on it I, i'm just curious um 2013. so there you go they were doing elgar in east germany and doing it awfully well that's one number two was this one that many of you mentioned with uh, Kyoka Takazawa. She's a terrific violinist, Japanese violinist. Um, it's coupled with the introduction in Allegro. And you've got the Bavarian Radio Symphony Orchestra under Colin Davis, who recorded it with some other people as well. So yes, there are, there are more Elgar violin concertos with Colin Davis and with other violinists. And finally, there was this one um, that it's also worth mentioning. Uh, this is the one with Tasman Little on Chandos. You get the interlude from the Crown of India and Polonia. Polonia. That's a big bombastic piece of schlog. Um, it's kind of fun to listen to once every 20 or 30 years. And this is, you know, doing the 
sort of not period instrument, I would say, but the musicology sort of root. It contains the alternative cadenza by Elgar. Let's see what this say. What this says as performed by uh, Marie Hall in the 1916 or is it, is it 16 or 26? I can't see. Um, but that early acoustic part, it has a harp part um, that he added, um, that was reconstructed from the original that he added for the acoustic performance because, of course, you couldn't hear the pizzicato tremolos or whatever. Anyway, um, he, he added a harp part. And so here that is. Um, and it was by Elgar. It was sanctioned by him. So that's interesting to have it. It's a separate track. Now, Little's performance is extremely extremely idiomatic. God knows she knows the work and very confident. I've just never cottoned to her tone, which is rather small. It's always been that way. It's, it's pure. It's nice. But I just think she doesn't have the, the sound for the piece. Um, and, you know, I, you could argue the same thing, I guess, for a violinist like Hilary Hahn, who also has a somewhat slender tone, but somehow it projects better. I mean, I never have a problem with balances listening to Hilary Hahn, where here I get a sense that, that she needs a little help from the microphones. And that just could be me. It could be because she's a very fine artist, um, first class artist, actually. And she plays a beautiful Algar concerto. The extra cadence is kind of fun. And Polonia is, you know, a hoot. And Andrew Davis is the conductor. He's done that for like a bazillion times, too. He's, he's also accompanied several other people in the work. So there you have three more Elgar violin concertos, just what you needed. I wanted to mention them because they are quite good. They really are. And it just goes to show what a high standard of performance we have in this work right now. Um, and particularly the plethora of really fine lady violinists who are running around doing it, which I think is just marvelous. I really do. I think it's just goes to show how screwed up the industry was back then. You see, the Minotti shows us how wonderful things were back then. The dearth of female violinists playing the Elgar Concerto shows us how messed up things were back then. So it's, you know, pluses and minuses always, right? So there's that. We're going to talk more about Minotti too, by the way, because there's the whole series on Naxos of original production things that we'll discuss and a series on Chandos of his stuff. And it's just, there's lots to talk about. These are good works. I, I, you know, rehearing them, I keep saying to myself, my gosh, he got such a, such a, the, the short end of the stick in terms of critical reception. It was good music. So there's that. Finally, as some of you may know, oh, where did I put it? Oh, here it is. I mean, how could I, how could I miss it? It weighs 400 pounds. There is the, the, this thing, the Fisher Descal Complete Leader Recordings on 107 fun-filled CDs. And you all know how I feel about Leader. Ugh. But I have it, and I've listened to, well, all of it at one point or another. Not all of it recently, but yes, I have heard it all. And we are going to talk about it. Yes, we will. <laughs> shortly. But, you know, maybe very shortly won't matter if you're watching this in the year 3,862. It'll all be just a big clump. But I just wanted to, to mention, you know, I was packing up the overflow room and I came across this. This is the old Fisher D. Scal edition. This is really fun, including first releases on CD. It was only 20 CDs plus a bonus, not 107. And back in the day, 20 CD sets were a big deal. <laughs> now it's like, eh, 20 CDs, it's nothing, absolutely nothing. And I, I, I mean, it's all nicely packaged. And it's a wonderful, it gives you a wonderful selection or overview of his career on 20 discs. You get, you get Winterreise and Die Schöne Müllerin and other leader and the Schwan and Gesang, you know, the big Schubert song cycles, and then a pile of Schubert leader with Jörg Damus and Schumann's Dichter Liebe and Kerner leader and the leader Kreis and other goodies. And then there's Beethoven and there's Liszt and Brahms and Hugo Wolf and Richard Strauss and Rager Fitzner and Ottmar Schuch and Debussy Ravel and Charles Ives. Yeah, Ives, his Ives songs are great. And we have um, Lieder Grosser Interpreten, songs by great artist composers, which is a wonderful disc. Um, and these are some of the real highlights of that big thing. And the Mahler, Songs of a Wayfair, Rückert Leader and Kindertoten Leader with Kubelik and Böhm. And let's see, Bach and Buxtehude stuff. 
um, and sacred arias and opera arias and more opera arias and then a bonus folk song settings by all these different people so that's it i mean it's a really terrific thing and of course it doesn't exist anymore it hasn't existed for decades i suppose i don't even know quite frankly how to open it anymore i mean i wouldn't know what happened if i tried to open it how, how do you open it does it does it come this way yeah i think the lid pops off here you know each of these things in those days were sui generous you know each package yeah here it is here it is you, you take the lid off and you have individual discs in individual jewel boxes. You see, these are all still in plastic. I never even opened them. Did I open any of them? I don't know. Because I had them all separately anyway. You know? So, I, you know, this was, this was like the thing I was going to save because I knew, I knew, as God is my witness, that there would never be um, another box like this dedicated to Fisher D. Scal. Ha, ha, ha! A lot I knew, right? I mean, there you go. It just goes to show. So I just thought I'd show that to you as a sample of what a, a big deal edition was back in the day. I mean, it has been very well preserved, I must say, thanks partly to me and partly to the fact that it's a very sturdy packaging concept. So it's in really good shape. But it's just funny. I see this now, 20 discs. And I, thought, I remember thinking, 20 discs of, discs of Fisher D. Scout doing leader. It's a lot, you know? I mean, oh my God. Yeah. At least these have the original CDs with the original notes and you get texts. We'll have a chat about the point of a 107 CD liter you know, gala celebratory tribute selection that contains no texts and translations. Mm. Of course, that would be a whole other project, wouldn't it? So there we go, stomp, thunk. One Fisher D. Scott edition before we talk about the other one. And that, my friends, is some of the latest stuff that updates prior videos or one to come still. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.